And next week marks the one-year anniversary of the election of Pope Francis. In just the past year alone, the Pope has become a sensation, praised for his humility and compassion for the poor, and doing away with a lavish lifestyle as the pontiff. With us now this morning to discuss the Pope's embrace of the poor and the anniversary marking his reign is Patrick Hornbeck, chair of the theology department at Fordham University. Patrick, thanks so much for being with thanks us. Thanks for having me, Morgan. This morning. So first off, explain why the Pope has become such an icon just this year alone. Well, I think the best way to explain that is to say, look back to a year ago, and no one would have been imagining that we would be having this particular story, or maybe a year and six weeks ago before the previous Pope, Benedict XVI, resigned. And so it's been a remarkable time for those of us who, who cover religion and who think about religion, the, the first papal resignation in over 800 years, but then not just followed by someone who seems to be maybe more of the same, but rather followed by a pope who's changed so many things about the style of the papacy just from the very beginning. So he gets in the bus and drives back to the place with his cardinals. He pays his hotel bill. He carries his luggage. Sure. And even though there haven't necessarily been changes in Catholic Church teachings, uh, I think for a lot of people that change in style is almost as important as a change in the substance. And it's that change in style that made him an sensation on the web of him kissing the parishioners and things like that but that hasn't necessarily translated into numbers of Catholics attending mass so how exactly does he turn that around that's a great question so at Fordham we're actually doing a study right now on Catholics who are stepping away from the church hmm. and about a third of Catholics people who are baptized Catholic in the United States at some point stop practicing that faith maybe one they third? come about a third of them wow. a little bit less than a third actually and one of the things I think we're seeing with Pope Francis is that there's an enthusiasm about Catholicism that we're not quite sure where it's going yet. Uh, Catholicism is a religion that works in centuries rather than years and certainly not the 24-hour news cycle and so I think it'll take a couple years to see what the so-called Francis effect ends up being but when I talk to people whether they're Catholic or non-Catholic what I hear from them is that this is someone who they see as sort of embodying those values of Jesus back in the gospel back in the New Testament um, and they see that as something different than a bureaucratic top-down centralized church which is what I think a lot of people have seen Catholicism as, uh, by and large. And you mentioned the Francis effect. Well, just in an interview this week, the Pope mentioned giving women a greater role in the church. Do you think it's possible that we'll see women ordained in the next few years? That's a great question, especially since it's International Women's Day just today. Um, ordained, I don't think so. Um, I think that there are, in, in Catholic teaching, there's a distinction between uh, theological teachings, which Catholics believe to be somehow related to the revelation that they've gotten from God, uh, and church practices. And so, for instance, up until the 13th century, Catholic priests were, for the most part, married. Um, and I think that we'll see married priests far before we see women priests, just because of the way those ideas are constructed in Catholic theology. And you mentioned this research that Fordham had been doing in which you saw about a third of the Catholics leave the church. Speaking of that, mm -hmm. why hasn't Pope Francis come to the U.S.? And do you think that's affecting Catholics here? Well, he's got a big world out there, Morgan. He I mean, sure there's does. a lot of countries to <laughs> go to. <laughs> there sure uh, are. But why not here? Well, that's why right. I mean, his first trip of uh, international trip was to Rio, and we saw those three million people on the beach at Copacabana right? Beach. Um, I think he will be coming to the U.S. What people have generally been talking about is 2015, okay. uh, a trip to Philadelphia in connection with his, his work on uh, marriage and the family. Um, but he's got a lot of other concerns on his plate, and I think that in this global Internet era, he's one of the most followed people on Twitter. I, I don't think that U.S. Catholics are not getting enough of the Pope. You don't? I don't. I think there's a lot of the Pope out there. Uh, and I think that when he does come, there's going to be an incredible fervor of enthusiasm for him here in this country. And this week we learned of a sinful story involving when he admitted he once stole a rosary cross from the casket of a late priest. What do you make of that? I hadn't heard that one, actually, Morgan. That's an interesting it story. It is, I, isn't it? One of the things he says in this interview he gave this week with an Italian newspaper is he says the Pope is a normal human. Uh, and that's kind and of hard so for some to people that, to right? believe because we think of popes as being on a pedestal and there's a Catholic teaching about the pope being infallible. But, you know, he says he goes to bed at night, he talks to friends on the phone, he does sorts of things that normal people do. And so who knows what else? Who knows what else? Speaking of which, finally, explain to us a little bit about this Ashes to Go ceremony performed on Ash Wednesday. So is this where people come to church and exactly. get their ashes and, and, and go? And take them. Uh -huh. Well, I, I think so. So Ash Wednesday is something that's celebrated in, in all the different Christian denominations. It's the beginning of the season of Lent. Mm -hmm. It's a moment to think about um, the things that we maybe want to change about our lives moving into the new year. And so a range of places, including St. Patrick's Cathedral here in New York, have priests and other folks standing by waiting to, to give you ashes. Uh, and I think, you know, it's 
sometimes I think religion seems to be the sort of obligation that you have to put hours and hours into on somebody else's schedule. And I think that what we learn about religion in the digital era, in the modern era, is that there are ways for people to be spiritual in connection with traditions that aren't necessarily as rule-bound as they've been in the past. And to make it more accessible. Patrick Hornbeck, Chair of Theology Department at Fordham University. Patrick, thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much.